see, if you look at the label there, it will carry up to three tonne. I get a lot of people ask me the question, why would they buy from me instead of going direct to the manufacturer? Well, the reason being is I don't just do this. I just ask the manufacturer, would they be okay if I was to sell this on their behalf, if I get a small kickback on it and they're happy to do that. So the reason why it'd be a good idea is this lift will lift any bike, more or less any bike. You need to, you need to find out what it'll lift, but it will definitely lift the GS, the RT and many other BMWs. So when you buy it from me, you automatically get the fitting kit that will fit the R1200, the R1250, GS and the RT. You automatically get that with a little spindle thing at the back so that you can jack the bike up. But the other reason why you buy it from me because it's, it's no cheaper. I'm no, I'm no more expensive and I'm no cheaper than buying it direct from the manufacturer. The only difference is you buy it from me, well, you're my customer. I'm gonna look after you. So when you come back to my website and you want to buy some, some Denali gear or something else and you remind me and say, hey Steve, do you remember I bought that Skylift from you? I go, oh yeah, so you did, yeah. Let me do this for you in return. Let me give you this extra discount for this. End of the day, people buy from people. If you want to buy from the manufacturer, I get that. If you, if you, if you want that peace of mind, that's fine. But if you're in the market for one of these and you think you might want something Denali or you think you might want to cut an N off K2, or, or something else that I do on my website, either now or in the future, well, I'm gonna look after you if you buy this through me. And it's gonna get there no quicker if you buy it from the manufacturer. As soon as you order it on my website, I literally ping that order straight through to the manufacturer and it's shipped straight away. If you're buying it in Europe or anywhere else in the world, I arrange the shipping. So it's not actually shipped by the manufacturer. I arrange for the courier to collect from the manufacturer and ship anywhere in the world. And the reason I can do that, well, anyone can do it, but that is my past trade. Before I got into doing my hobby as a business, my business was in the shipping industry. And I sold that company back in 2016, but I've got great contacts in the curry industry worldwide where I can ship stuff like this all over the world. If you're buying it in the UK, it gets shipped by the manufacturer. If you're buying it anywhere else in the world, I arrange the shipment, but it's picked up more or less the very next day or, or sometimes the same day if your order comes through first thing in the morning. So that's why there is a benefit from buying it from me because I don't just sell stands. I do a lot of other stuff too. So let's get this on my bike. I'm gonna jack it up and give it a wash. So when it arrives, it comes in three three um, packages and it's very easy to put together. It's literally just is diagrams and full very simple instructions how to put this together. It doesn't take that long. Once you've got it all together, it wheels around. And I get people ask questions all the time about it needs to be on a really smooth surface. Well, if you look at my block paving on my driveway, it's, um, it's quite knobbly. It, it, there's little grooves all over it. It wheels around really, really easy. And I'll show you how it wheels around really easy, even with the bike on it as well. First things we do is we take this piece off first. And I'm gonna wheel this round here. I'm gonna leave that piece there, because we need that on this side. With the casters on, obviously on the release mode, so you can wheel it around. We then, we're gonna basically push this little uh, fitment here into the hole on the swing arm attachment, the center swing arm there. We're gonna push that into there. As you're doing it, you need to stand the bike up, put the kickstand up. Obviously, it's advisable to do this on a level surface. Don't even do it on a slope. <laughs> It'd be crazy to. And then you push the this in like that. If it's not quite the right height, don't worry. Still supporting the bike with one hand. It's not difficult to do. All you're doing is finding the balancing point. It doesn't matter how heavy this bike is or how heavy your bike is. As long as you've got that balancing point, that's what matters. Now I've actually just, the actual fitment has just got stuck inside the hole. Now, if it is not quite the right height, well then you can play around with it by going up or releasing the valve down here, bringing it back down again. So as I take it in, it's the wrong height. So I'm going to bring it up level, making sure the bike is bang in the middle on the balancing point, because I don't want it leaning one way too, too, too far. A little bit more, that's now gone in. Once that's in, we're now gonna lock these in place. You can use your foot or your finger. So that is now locked. So that won't wheel anywhere. 
Now all I'm doing is I'm making sure, because if I let go of the bike, it will fall over the other way if it's bang in the middle. So I'm still holding onto the bike using the handle or I can hold on here. So I'm now gonna stand up and walk around the other side. At the same time, I'm gonna pick up the camera as well. So I'm holding the back of the bike. Right, let's make sure you can see that. Right, and then this side, you can see I've got um, a couple of fasteners and I've got an Allen key which has slipped out of the holder. So we're gonna slide this. I'm, I'm still holding the bike with one hand, pushing it against the stand. The stand's not going anywhere. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just making sure it's leaning against that stand. I'm now pushing this in. And now it, because it's not quite lined up, it just shows the bike is leaning fractionally towards the stand a little bit too much, but that's okay. It's only a little bit, so I'm now going to bring it back, lean it across this way a little bit more, pop that in. I'm now going to tighten the little, we'll bring this round. I'm now going to tighten this little nut just there. And at this stage, because that's not tight enough, I'm going to tighten the Allen key fitting next to it, like that. Now there could be some slack between this side and the other side. We're now going to start tightening this. And as I do that, that's now applying pressure between the two points. And it won't slide down here at the bottom because we tightened up those two nuts. So that's now very tight. So that can't come undone. We're going to take this, which they call a dolly. This comes with the, the, the R1200 and 1250 and the, the GS and the RT and that just slides into the swing arm. Perfect fit. You then, we, we're going to put this into wheelie position. If I just lift the bike right now, the back end will go up because the engine keeps the front end down. But if I attach this to here, there's another attachment that comes with it where you can attach it to a bar which comes here, which when you lift it, it goes up completely horizontal. If we put this onto here, pull that nice and tight. And now, as I start pumping this up, making sure this valve here is closed, we start pumping the foot pedal the bike will start lifting up. This is now in the maximum position, but this key here, so we're gonna lower it down a little bit, a bit too far. And that pushes into there like so, and that's now locked in position. So when I release this nut, I've literally released the gas and that's staying there which gives me the confidence to literally lie underneath this if I wanted to and work on it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just gonna lower it back down again and I'm gonna cover it in snow foam and give it a quick wash. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention how easy it is to actually move this with it, with the bike on there. Now I'm gonna go down and release the casters at the bottom. So you can do it with your finger or your, or your foot just by flicking them up. I can now just turn it around, and just move it around. It's really simple. Uh, I'm not really noticing any effect um, or any negative effect with the, um, the block paving. I don't feel like there's any fear of the, the bike falling off, or falling over in any way. Bearing in mind, this is not a maximum height. I'm just taking it about, not even halfway up. You notice I haven't even used a sponge or a brush on this. 
it wasn't really that dirty. I took it for a little ride a couple of weeks ago to go and take some, uh, you saw the video actually, where I took some essentials to my parents, elderly parents, elderly. I don't like thinking of them as elderly, but I took some essentials to them and it kicked up a little bit of mud around the rear end. So the front was still very clean. So it just needed a bit of foam on there and a quick rinse down. Now I want to get under the back a bit, so I'm going to lower the lift all the way down to the floor. And now all I'm going to do is just take out the dolly. Give it to the side if you want to, I'll put, put it to one side. And now we're just going to jack the bike up again. That's all the way up. So now I can get right under here. Just makes it so much, so much easier. To work on. Okay, so now we're all, all done. Now we're going to take the sky lift off the bike. So obviously a lot of due care and attention is needed because you don't want the bike to drop on you. So if we go around the other side, uh, also make sure they're locked again. So just lock down the casters. So this will not roll around. It's moving a little bit because I've got the bike all the way down and it's back and the weight is back on its wheels, but it's not going to fall over because it's still got all that tension in the middle so it can't fall over. Now we know the lift is locked that side. We know it's not gonna, it can't push over that way. So we start loosening this off. So that's released the tension. And now what we're gonna do is undo the big, the big screw, the Allen key. Put that back in there. Unscrew the hand tightened fastener as well and pull this off like that. Literally just lie that on the floor at this stage. That doesn't matter. Now holding on to it again, I'm going to walk around the other side of the bike and pull the trolley out. Just um, First of all, I need to unlock the casters. So I need to unlock those casters. I'm holding on to the bike with the handlebar now. Unlock that side. And now I'm just going to pull, pull the trolley away, holding the bike, balancing it with my right hand. And now I'm going to put the kickstand down and rest the bike down. So hopefully you saw that from that side of the bike. I couldn't quite reach the camera from where I was. It's not, not safely anyway. Yeah. 